Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. All right, so I am back and we're going to be doing a playthrough of Secrets of the Lost Tomb. But however, this is going to be a somewhat modified playthrough. Um, I'm working on a, I guess you could say it's a, a way to play the game without using the scenarios that are included. Just kind of like a random dungeon crawl mode. Um, so anyways, I, I've taken a few weeks off after finishing up the Warhammer Quest series and uh, I had some family in town and just doing some other things. So that's why I have been gone, but I am back now and I'm super stoked to be bringing Secrets of the Lost Tomb back to the channel. Um, as some of you know, this is my favorite game and I was just trying to think of a cool way to play this game without using the scenarios because there's so much to this game that you really can have, I think, a fun time without having to play through through one of those scenarios. And so what we're going to be doing is, this is just a first step in kind of uh, developing a random dungeon crawl mode for this game. And this is what we're going to have to do in the game. Okay, so we're... To win our scenario, we're going to have to kill 10 base creatures. We're going to have to kill, and then we're going to have to kill 10 elite creatures. After that, we're going to have to get down to level 3 of the tomb. And our first spawn room, we're going to spawn a random boss. And then we have to kill the boss. And that is how we're going to win. So 10 base creatures, then kill 10 elite creatures, then go down to level 3 and kill a boss. Now, as we explore, whenever we discover one of the scenario triggers, normally these would trigger something for us to read in the scenario book. But what we're going to do is we're going to roll a dice, and on if we um, scenario trigger one, if we roll a one, we're going to draw a room from a if we're going to draw a danger room. Scenario trigger two, we're going to roll. If we roll a one or a two, we're going to draw a danger room. And the third scenario trigger on a roll of a one to three, we're gonna draw a danger room. Now the danger rooms here are a stack of tiles that I have created using the Passages and Perils expansion, I believe it is called. Um, let's see here, the Passages and Perils expansion. Yeah, so this is a room, this is a stack of tiles that is contains a whole bunch of traps and stuff. And so this will be um, just kind of a way to uh, to add a little bit of danger. And I do need to also think of something to do with the progress of the uh, the comet track. I'm not quite sure yet. So we're going to start this adventure with just keeping track of this as turns go. And then I'm going to try to think of something to do with that as we go. So we are going to be playing with two of the promo characters. We are going to be playing with Vampirella and Adam Van Helsing. So Vampirella, she has a strength, her stats are up here, strength three, dexterity four, knowledge one, mythos four, and movement five. Okay, she doesn't start with any weapons or any gear, which is quite unusual. She does start with five courage, and that gives her a plus one to all checks. She also has these two special abilities. She is immortal. Um, in combat, when you roll a six, gain one health. She's also immune to all physical, um, what do they call, physical detriments, um, physical status effects. Okay, and she's also a slayer. In combat, each success deals double damage. Also, I do not lose courage from any base monsters. So base creatures do not scare me. Now, when you're playing with only two heroes, each hero starts with two companions. So the companions that I have uh, drawn for, for uh, Vampirella are the Scotsman and Landon Rabbit's Foot Jace. So the Scotsman is when, um, when I draw him, I get the um, fearless got these mixed up there okay so when I have him I gain fearless 
And what Fearless does is I do not lose courage from any creatures. So um, it kind of doubles up with her innate ability, but it also protects her from losing courage from elite creatures, which is pretty cool. And then during the upkeep phase of the tomb phase, I gain plus one courage. And so since she doesn't go down in courage, she's going to be getting up to level 10 pretty <laughs> pretty dang quickly. And then we also have this guy here, uh, Rabbit's Foot Jace. And when you gain this companion, you gain Lucky. And pass all checks on a 4, 5, or 6. So usually checks are passed on a 5 or 6. So um, this gives you a better chance of passing checks. Now, I don't think that combat is considered a check even though it's called a combat check. I believe what that is referring to is in rooms and stuff, when you see something like this, that's a movement check. And it gives you what happens if you pass or fail. Um, I was looking through the rule book and I couldn't quite find a place where it said that that, that is true, but I believe that's, that's true. So if somebody knows uh, differently, please let me know. And anyway, so she starts with uh, 17, 18 health and no audacity, which is really weird. I need to definitely get her up on some audacity. And then also playing with two heroes. Each hero starts with six um, action points. And so we're going to be using these dials here to uh, keep track of, of that. And we're going to have Vampirella be the first player. And then next we have uh, Adam Van Helsing. His stats here are 4, 3, 3, 2, and 4. Um, his special abilities is he's a monster hunter. During the tomb phase, if a creature ends its movement within 1 to 2 rooms away, you may automatically move into it and do a combat with it. This creature is minus 2 to its combat this round. All right, then I'm also, uh, my second Monster Hunter feature is if I lose courage from a creature, when it is killed, I gain all that courage back from the creature. And he starts at plus three to his, um, to his courage, which gives him uh, nothing right now. He starts with his Enchanted Blade, which gives him a plus three to his combat and a plus one to all checks. And um, I succeed on a four, five, or six in combat. And his two companions are the Avatar of Perseus, which I can exhaust this, tap it basically, to perform a free combat action. And then um, Earl Hawk, when I do combat, I may exhaust him and gain plus four and succeed on a four, five, or six. So yeah, these, these uh, characters are going to be pretty strong. I, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, I won't run into too much trouble here, but let's see. So let's again, uh, this is uh, Van Helsing's mini, and this is Vampirella's. All right, so like I said, we're gonna have Vampirella go first. And for her first movement, so the things you can do on a turn in uh, Secrets of the Lost Tomb, you can do movement, and movement includes moving, um, exploring, and evading. You can search a room, uh, you can do a combat, you can combat a target, you can use a special ability, use an item or artifact or a companion, pick up items or artifacts, you can rest, trade with another adventurer, or deal with the soul monger. Whenever you have one of these um, shapes there, those symbols there, that lets you spend experience points to buy powerful artifacts. So we, we need to explore the tomb. We're looking for creatures to kill. And let's see how this uh, modified version goes. All right, so we're going to spend Vampirella's first um, point of action, and we're going to do a movement. Her movement is five. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move her over here and explore up here. Hopefully, I have a, enough room on this small table for this game. This game can take up a massive amount of space. So we'll see how that goes. I might have to end up moving the hero cards to a side table. But all right, so we're going to go, uh, let's see, one, two, and she will move here for three. Okay, so I need to draw a room tile that matches our level, which we're at level one right now. All right, so we'll go to the second one here. 
And what is it? It is the labors of Hercules. All right, so I can do an audacity search in here to find the Aegis of Hercules relic, but uh, Vamprella has no audacity, so I can't. So also in here, we're gonna have an adventure. So we're gonna draw a random adventure. Okay, and these comet uh, little claw-like looking uh, symbols, those are doorways. So the doorways have to match up. So we've got a green there, a green there. We'll put that like that and we move her in. We do certain, uh, we encounter the room in a certain order. Starting here, the number one is we have an explore action, which would be listed somewhere on the card. We don't have an explore thing to do. Uh, next up is we would encounter any traps. Next up, we would do the scenario triggers. And then finally, we would do the adventures or the misadventures. So we do are gonna have an adventure. We're gonna take our adventure deck, give that a quick shuffle. Uh, this is a subset of adventure cards not all of them, put our cover back up and then draw the first one here. So let's see what happens with Vampirella here. All right, before you is a man wearing a black robe which glows red. He reaches out to you holding a burning green orb. Well, this guy's uh, very colorful. You approach, thinking he must be the soulmonger, right? Ah, do an audacity to check. All right, well, once again, she has no audacity, so she automatically will fail this test. So we have to read the uh, failure. Uh, you step closer, hoping to trade your soul shards when the ceiling comes alive, dropping sharpened pendulums and spouting jets of flame. You avoid it without much more than a scratch. Minus one courage. Okay, so she is immune to losing courage from creatures, but not to story effects. So she's going to go down to four. Again, having zero audacity is... Uh, that could be quite detrimental to uh, to this playthrough. Okay, so that was her first action. So now we're gonna go on to Van Helsing. And I think we're going to have him, um, he'll kind of explore maybe up to, and maybe he can, uh, he can meet her in the middle here. So he's just gonna go up here. Again, we're gonna draw a tile until we reach our level one. There is a level one tile. Ooh, and this is Corsair's Cache. Now, this is a red room. This is a place where monsters can spawn during the tomb phase. There are no other exits out, and we are going to have a misadventure, and there is nothing else to do in here. All right, so move Van Helsing into there, and now let's draw our top misadventure card. You find a pool of water rippling and swirling. You approach cautiously. All right, so we need to do a mythos check, which his mythos is two, and we need two successes. Um, let's see, he does not have any bonuses to non-combat checks. So let's see here. I think I'm going to spend a point of audacity, bringing him down to two audacity, which means that four, fives, or sixes are going to count as successes. So we're gonna roll these two dice here. And a one and a six. Nope, all right, so we failed that test. Let's see. You step close to the pool and your ankle is arrested by a hundred tentacles which pull you through the portal. Your consciousness is bombarded by visions of an alternate world. Seas of slime and mountains of bones, rotting flesh everywhere. When you awake, your flight instinct kicks in. Set your courage to minus 10. Oh, fantastic. All right. So already I have to flee the tomb. Um, and I am right by the entrance, meaning that 
Vampirella is going to have to get over here and um, help Van Helsing not flee the tomb. Because um, all he can do is when, you, is when you're fleeing is, um, is run towards the exit. I'm actually going to have to look up in the book to remember how a... Um, how a, a hero helps another hero because I cannot remember. It's been a long time. Um, let's see here. Where is it? Fleeing the tomb. Got to find that here. Hopefully it's easy to find. Let's see. Uh, fleeing the tomb. Yep, page eight. All right. Okay, fleeing the tomb. When fleeing, gain a plus one movement. Uh, saving an adventurer from fleeing the tomb. If an adventurer who is not fleeing shares a room with a fleeing adventurer, the calm adventurer may spend one audacity. Oh, great. Well, Van Vampirella has no audacity. So it looks like Van Helsing is going to not be in this adventure after all. Um, Cause his next turn, he will flee the tomb and we are going to have to roll up a new character excellent start to this uh, <laughs> up here. Oh, okay well anyways let's move on to uh, Vampirella's next turn so we're going to mark her down to uh, four actions left very very good start uh, that's the thing about this game uh, kind of like Warhammer Quest it's, it can be wildly swingy in all kinds of <laughs> directions all right, so we're going to move her. Um, let's just go ahead and move her right here. So again, we need to find a level one. And there's our level one in the stack. Ooh, a sacrificial chamber. Another red spawn zone. Uh, potential to spawn monsters here. And it only has one exit. So we're going to match that up there. And then she is going to have a misadventure here. All right, reading the sixth layer of Hercules, that would the sixth labor of Hercules. Oh, that's kind of cool. We just came from the Hercules chamber. I love it when stuff like that happens in these games, in this game, and it seems to happen a lot. Um, you never thought it could be as challenging as it is. Looking up, you see thousands of birds flying near the ceiling of this huge room, blocking the light from above. This darkness seems to strengthen some strange undead creatures in the center. Do a, uh, what is that, a Mythos 2 check. All right, so her Mythos is a little better, is 4. Now she passes all checks on a 4, 5, or 6. So I need 2, 4, 5s, or 6s. And there's a 5 and a 6 and a 5. All right, so we pass that. You quickly decipher the safety instructions on the wall and align the rune-covered stones. They sparkle and shine with the whole spectrum of light. The ceiling opens up a magical portal and the birds escape to the sky. The light returns the dead rest. Plus one audacity. All right, so we gain the point of audacity. Unfortunately, that ends our turn because we have to go back to Van Helsing now who is going to escape the tomb. And there is absolutely nothing we can do to stop this. So, all right, I'm out of here. Boom, boom. And Van Helsing leaves the tomb, leaving Vampirella all alone to fight off the hordes of monsters. So we're gonna put, <laughs> we're gonna put Van Helsing away and we're gonna have to spawn up a, uh, another hero. I'll just draw one at random. And I think because of that, because it, it, it will be this uh, new hero's turn, we're going to uh, stop there for the day. And I will uh, put up the new heroes soon, and we will get right back to it in the next part. So, all right. Well, hey, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully, uh, this uh, cool little, like, house rule modified version of Secrets of the Lost Tomb ends up being fun and interesting. I don't really know yet. I will think of something to do with the comment tracker. And um, yeah, so we will see you guys next time. Take it easy. Bye-bye.